Hey guys, here's a video where I walk through how to find vertical asymptotes. Uh, so the idea here is, you know, suppose you have some kind of equation like this, where you have, uh, you know, a numerator and a denominator, and your your first instincts are to look at, you know, what's the domain, right? You're trying to figure out at least, you know, if you're trying to graph these things, what can you possibly plug into this equation to yield y values that actually work? So hopefully your instincts are looking at the denominator and and realizing there's you know a problem here if X is 4 we have a denominator of 0 which is going to cause the issue what you learn as you go a little further in math is that just because you have a value that makes this undefined doesn't mean that doesn't give you something interesting about the curve so in this example uh, you know we do end up having what's called a vertical asymptote so vertical asymptote and we want to really kind of differentiate that between some other things that can happen uh, just because the denominator is zero, since you could actually have holes in the graph or uh, you know, corners in the graph or you know, cusps, things like that can happen too, depending on what type of function you have. So here's how vertical asymptotes sort of separate themselves from everything else. This is what you're looking for. Is there an A value, either from the right or the left, for this function that actually yields plus or minus infinity? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Is there an A value, some actual value A, not infinity, but an A value, whether you go from the right or the left, that yields a limit of either plus or minus infinity? If the answer to that question is yes, then at X equals A, so if yes, then F of X has a vertical asymptote at X equals A. That's how you would say it. X equals A is a vertical line. So if A was 2, X equals A would be, you know, the vertical line at 2. So in this case, it looks like it's going to be at 4. But let's just check it. The limit as X approaches 4 from the left, let's just check one side first, of F of X. If I look at this equation, as X approaches 4 from the left, the numerator is approaching 8, right? A little less than 8, but still 8. The denominator, if X is approaching four from the left, that's a number just slightly smaller than four. So if I subtract four, I'm gonna get a really, really tiny negative number. If I divide a positive by a negative, I'm gonna get negative. And if I divide eight by really, really small numbers, smaller and smaller, this is going off to infinity. So this limit is actually negative infinity. Just double check the other side. As X approaches four from the right, so that means the, the numerator is still approaching 8, but this time a little more than 8, but, but still 8, or the, the, the limit is still 8, but the value itself is going to be slightly higher than 8. The denominator, I can't get a value, but if I plug in 4.01, I'm going to get positive 0.01. If I plug in 4.001, I'm going to get positive 0.0001. So I'm going to get a number divided by really, really small numbers. So that's going to infinity. Positive divided by positive is positive. So this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Let's take a look at the graph, make sure that that is reasonable with what we've just determined. So I have 2x divided by x minus 4. St standard window here. Get rid of the glare, uh, maybe that way. There you go. So as, as you look here, x equals 4 is this vertical line, and the graph is approaching it. Right, approaching infinity, negative infinity, excuse me, as X approaches four from the left, as X approaches four from the left, you're down here. As X approaches four from the right, you're going up to positive infinity. We can plug in numbers if you want. Let's calculate a value at, you know, 3.999. You get negative almost 8,000, and it's just going to get further and further away. If I plug in a value 4.001, or 001, look what you get. You get a little over 8,000. You see that there? So this is just approaching positive infinity from the right, approaching negative infinity from the left. Because we're approaching any infinities, according to our, our rule here, that means that we have a vertical asymptote at that value. So that's the main idea. But sometimes they can try to trick you. Those silly gooses trying to trick you all the time. So suppose our function looks like this instead. So you're feeling pretty good. You're like, all right, I can figure this out. All I got to do is figure out, you know, what makes the denominator zero. So you look at this one really quickly and you're like, oh, X squared minus one. So X squared would equal one when X is plus or minus one, right? 
So you're thinking you've got vertical asymptotes at plus and minus one. But that's not actually what happens here. Because again, this has to happen in order for our vertical asymptote to exist. The limit as x approaches plus or minus one needs to be infinite. It has to be plus or minus infinity. And that's not going to happen here. So watch what happens. Let's do the limit as x approaches. Let's do the positive one version first. This is going to be x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So that's the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 1. Hopefully you've already done these kinds of problems. If not, that might be a different video for you. These will cancel. And as x approaches 1, I'm left with 1 over 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. This turns into a, just a 1 here. And I have 1 over 2. So this limit is not actually infinite. It's one half. What that means is we actually have a hole in the graph at one comma one half. And I'll show you that in the graph afterwards. What about the limit as x approaches negative one? Well, it's the same factoring. So it's still going to be x minus one over, right? I'll still show this. But watch what happens now. As x approaches negative one, I'm going to get a zero in the denominator. This is going to be. 1 over x plus 1, oops, I forgot the limit, sorry, limit as x approaches negative 1 of 1 over x plus 1 is what we're looking at. And now it's going to be kind of like one of these problems. If you plug in or, you, you know, you do as x approaches negative 1 from, you know, the left or something, you're going to get 1 over a really, really tiny number. And it's going to be uh, a, a tiny number. Let's see, from the left, we're going to have negative, you know, 1.001. So this is a bigger negative than that positive one is. That's going to be a negative value. That's going to be negative infinity. The limit as X, oh, that I should have written from the left. The limit as X approaches negative one from the right of this one is going to become positive infinity. So now you have like numbers like negative 0.999 plus one is just 0.001. Again, same idea. One divided by a really, really small positive number is going off to infinity. So we do have a vertical asymptote at X equals negative one but a hole at one, one half. You might say, but why isn't it, why aren't they the same? You know, why aren't they both asymptotes? Because again, you have to have an infinite limit to be a vertical asymptote. This is not an infinite limit. It's a limit of one half. What does that look like in the graph? Well, we're going to see a hole and we're going to see an asymptote. Uh, what did I do? X minus one divided by X squared minus one. Let's do a standard window and let's take a look. So there's the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Look at x is positive 1. There's no vertical asymptote there. Now you're probably saying, well, Mr. Miller, there's not a hole there either. Well, I respectfully disagree. Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. We know it's at 1 half, so let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do, um, you know, let's just go 0 to 2, and let's go 0. Let's just go 0 to 2 for both because it's kind of happening in that little zone. And now graph it. See it? See the hole at one, right? Right there. That's not a vertical asymptote. That's just a hole in the graph. Okay, at one comma where one half would be. If I were to plug in values really close to one, I'm going to get values really close to one half. And there you go. From the other side, it'd probably be just under a half. But that's the difference. That's why these can get a little tricky. So it's not as simple as just, oh, when's the denominator zero? It's when do you get an infinite limit? So you have to check it. A lot of times, you know, especially if you're doing problems from this section specifically, yes, you may end up with more vertical asymptotes than normal. But you have to at least consider this because there might be some that try to. And that's the main idea behind vertical asymptotes using limits. Hopefully that helps. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please be sure and reach out and uh, have a great rest of your day.